What's up everybody, Waffle Hands is back and today we are making the ultimate breakfast smash burger. It is one of the worst, best things you'll ever eat and all your friends will rave all about it on the way to dialysis. What makes these smash burgers different from regular hand patties is the application of pressure during the cooking process that helps form a crust packed full of flavor on the outside of the burger. First ingredients we'll need are a couple ounces of Hennessy combined with a premium black sitcom apple juice. Turn on your favorite radio station and drink up. You should be like this by the end of this video. Now, before I jump into this, I just want to lay a disclaimer. This recipe has pork in it. Lots of pork. Yes, you could replace the pork ingredients with beef or turkey, but... That would be so goddamn boring! Okay, so we're doing this. Take one pound of ground pork, ask your local butcher for the light-skinned beef, and they should be able to hook you up with it. We're adding a tablespoon of all-purpose seasoning, a teaspoon of coarse steak rub, a fourth of a teaspoon of dried rub sage, and my favorite part, half a pack of pulse maple bacon. This part was simple. I took the bacon, dropped it in the food processor, pulsed it a few times, and voila. Throw that in and mix it all up until the ingredients are incorporated. Now it's time for a candied bacon. Oh my god! For this, it's pretty simple. We'll take the other half of the pack of bacon and place it on the sheet and sprinkle some brown sugar over each piece. You can do both sides if you really want to crank up the sweetness. You could also add a little bit of chipotle powder to get some sweet heat going. Set your oven to 375 and let it cook for 20 minutes. Our next layer of heart-stopping goodness comes in the form of hash browns. You can make your own, which I always encourage people to make their own ingredients from scratch, or get some store-bought. It all depends on how fast you want to die. Get them nice and brown and cover them to keep warm while you get the other ingredients ready. Now, I don't need to show you how to make eggs because we've all made eggs by this point. I just- What are you doing, bitch? Okay, we've got our eggs and hash browns ready and our candied bacon is just finished up. I've checked my blood pressure and everything looks good for right now. The only thing left to do is cook our burgers. All right, I've got the grill cranked up to 400 degrees and I've placed a special cast iron grill top in my Kamado Joe grill. If you don't have one of these, it's all good. You can use a cast iron skillet or a cast iron griddle placed on the grill. You don't even need a grill for this. You can easily just do this on the stove top, but having a cast iron pan is crucial. Allow it to get nice and hot. Ha! This. A high temperature surface is exactly what we want to get these burgers to form that delicious crust. I've taken a spatula and wrapped foil around it to prevent any of the meat from squeezing through the slits on it. Form four evenly sized balls out of your meat and one by one place them on the grill and apply heavy pressure to the burger for 30 seconds. What we're doing to create our crust is called the Maillard reaction. To better explain it, here's a scientist. Science nigga here. Every protein is backed by an amino acid and these amino acids, they go out and they try to bang these simple sugars, right? Which create these brown beautiful molecule babies with long curly hair and green eyes and pretty shit like that. And that, my friend, is what unlocks the flavor within your food. This happens to all kinds of food, from your baked bread to your grilled shrimp to your caramelized onions and toast. And when you start smashing that burger, you make a bigger surface area for your crust. So when you bite into that thing, nigga, oh my god, oh. Thank you, scientists. Put your balls on a hot surface and smash it. I made it rain with a little kosher salt for taste. Allow them to cook for about six minutes, flip them over, and you should notice a crust. No need to apply any pressure on the flip, as we don't want to squeeze too much of the juices out of the burger. Another six minutes, and we should be all gravy, which will be amazing on this burger if you want to stop breathing in the middle of the night. Now it's time to start piling the toppings. First we'll add our cheese. I'm using a sharp cheddar today, but I highly recommend using smoked cheddar. Also while we're at the grill, I've taken four potato buns and sprayed them with some what the fuck is this spray? We'll let these toast while our cheese melts. Once your cheese is melted and your buns are nice and toasted, it's time to dress our burger. First some eggs, a little bit of hash browns and candied bacon, and a nice drizzle from our favorite auntie on the burger and the bun. Feel free to go crazy and add even more toppings like smoked sausage, salsa, and even grits. Yes, it wouldn't be a cooking video without someone eating this delicious creation, so take it away, Kendra! Okay, so I'm about to try the ultimate breakfast, no, the ultimate breakfast smash burger. I haven't had pork in so long. And it is so delicious. This is so delicious. Very moist. It's not too greasy. Like the layers of everything, it's like the right, just perfect amount. It doesn't taste like I'm eating a pork burger. Cause it's ground pork. Yeah, it doesn't taste like them. It is well flavored, but nothing in particular is actually standing out. It just is really good. I don't like, oh, I taste the cilantro. I don't taste anything like that, but. So this is, I would replace this for breakfast. Mm -hmm. This is something I would use for breakfast. Last time I made it, I put grits in it. Now why you didn't make the grits for me? I'm sorry, I don't want to talk anymore. 